For those, this was just going to be a quick video regarding those Chernobyl forest fires because I've been hearing from people lots of different information on this. And sort of, it was one of those things where you think, oh, it's slightly concerning that not much might come of it. And then, as you'll probably know, I did a video the other day because all of a sudden I noticed my Geiger counters were reading higher numbers because I have Geiger counters in most rooms in the house because, you know, I like collecting them. And then you can stick them around and you can have them set an alarm off or whatever if the radiation levels go up. So I thought, why not? Um, and I also do that, obviously, because where I've got samples and even I store those safely, you want to always know that there's nothing, you know, leaking or whatever. So all of a sudden, you know, a load of my Geigers went off, you know, the alarms or, you know, the thresholds were a lot higher. So I thought, right, what's causing this? Went and checked my samples. No, they were totally fine as always. So I thought, this is weird. So then I was walking around the house of the therapy and I was noticing closer to the windows, the levels were higher. So then I went outside and then you'll have seen the video. I was putting it in puddles and on window sills and bits of gravel and, you know, grass. And the wetter it was with the rain, the um, higher the radiation levels. So obviously something had come down, like fallout, in the rain. Um, now, it could have been, that was completely unrelated to Chernobyl, but it definitely came from somewhere. But anyway, the point was that there's been these forest fires in Chernobyl recently, and the reason being it's just been quite a dry, sort of April by the sound of it, you know, March, April. The um, forest where a lot of it is dead anyway, because of um, the radiation that killed a lot of the plants originally, um, they'd set on fire. And the reason this is dangerous is because basically when you've got sort of plants and you know lots of contamination around because what they did with Chernobyl is they left a lot of the red forest as it was when they did the clean up other bits you know they threw stuff or basically poured stuff from helicopters down it was like molasses it was this really sticky kind of tar oily stuff that was designed to stop the dust from rising up but over time that would break down a lot of the topsoil was buried but what ended up happening was obviously where this has been this fire all the radionuclides that were still around in the forest were burning up, going up with the smoke, and then they will come down as fallout. And apparently in Kiev now, the radiation levels are a lot higher than they normally are. So, you know, other than putting out the fires, there's not much you can do about that, but it does show you, you know, when you've had nuclear contamination, it doesn't really go away. Because, again, while the worst of the radionuclides aren't still there, you know, like the Cobalt-60 and stuff like that is going to be negligible at this point, the cesium-137, strontium-90, you know, they're still around. They're, they're a lot weaker than they were in 86, but they are still there. And if they come down, the, the bigger worry, I think, is accidental contamination of stuff and people don't realise. So when I went out yesterday and was measuring the levels, obviously I got rain on me. I came in and thought, I'd better check my hoodie, made the Geiger counter go off, put the um, hoodie in the wash. After the first rinse, I got the Geiger counter out again and checked it. Levels were lower, they were still higher than normal. Put it through again for a second wash, and then it was back to normal. But the point is, you could very easily be exposed if something like this happens anywhere in the world, and not know about it. So yeah, the whole point is, as again, like I said, I'm not really a prepper, but Geiger counters and radiation detecting equipment I find pretty fascinating. And it does show that, you know, it can come in handy. Because there's all sorts of things people wouldn't really even think about, you know, because some people go... Or if a nuclear bomb went off, you'd be dead. But the point is, there's lots of other sources radiation can come from. First thing, I find it pretty fascinating if I'm ever out and about anywhere. I mean, not so much during lockdown now, obviously, but just taking a little pocket Geiger counter with me and seeing if it ever goes higher than normal and trying to work out why that is. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinion on the Chernobyl fires. It's not a very big one. But as said, it's just, if if you can measure things, be safe. And if you've had stuff out, you know, like on the washing line or whatever, and it's been rained on recently and you've had wind and, you know, weather coming from the sort of Ukraine Chernobyl area, it might be best to just wash it again just to be safe, because as I said, um, I was quite surprised by the level of contamination. Yeah, and again, it was only 0.6 microsieverts, about three times background, but three times background all of a sudden out of nowhere is pretty significant. And the big issue is, of course, if you ingest or inhale something that lodges in your lungs, lodges in your stomach, goes to the bone, like strontium-90 would, um, strontium-90 and radium both basically go to the bone, you get that in you, that's that's not going to do you a lot of good because it might stay in your body for years, constantly causing damage that could lead to leukemia, you know, or some some sort of a bone marrow cancer, so um, blood cell cancer, that sort of thing. So yeah, there you go. That's my opinion on the uh, Chernobyl fires. Hopefully everybody's safe. I don't think it's a doomsday scenario level event, but it's worth monitoring, you know, and keeping an eye on because there's going to be a lot of incidents like this, unfortunately, where stuff can come back, you know like a kind of spectra of the past, lots of radiation stuff just doesn't go away due to the half-life of the material, you know, they can come back and potentially have quite dangerous results, so just keep an eye on it, really.